Now that we understand conditional expressions, we need to start putting it into practice. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, first off, I'll say list A equals to one, two, and three. So if you remember back, we did a for loop, so for some item, so I'll just say I in list A, will print out I. And of course, that's one, two, three. And I can also do for I in list A, I can print out I squared. So I star star two squares that number. Kind of cool. So now I can use my conditional statements. Let's do one. We'll do for I in list A, and we'll say if I to the t squared, so we're squaring off I, I'll put those in parentheses, and then we'll say modulo three equals to zero. We're gonna print your number is nine. And we're gonna make sure that's true by doing print and we'll print out I. So let's try that out, press enter, and your number is nine. Ah, but we didn't, we printed out three, right? So we printed out the number three, but three squared is nine. Um, so that's a very simple version of using this modulo, right? We could do another sort of list. So we could say list, or excuse me, a very, very simple version of using modulo inside of a conditional, um, but also mainly the conditional. So if I change the condition, I can do something else. So I could say for I in list A, if I is equal to two, we're gonna print, yup, it's two. L if, so like else if, so if another clause is happening, if I is equal to one, we're gonna print something different. And finally else, we're gonna say print, I. Something different. Yep, it's two, three. So let's see this, how this controls the flow of, of our loop and why it's important. So we're looping through the list, one, two, and three. Each iteration, the first iteration is going to be one, second iteration is going to be two, third iteration is going to be three. It goes through this statement, the entire thing, and matches it. The first match that it sees, it returns it, right? So in this case, um, we said if i is equal to two, yep, it's two. Number one, that first iteration, the number one that's coming through, we don't match this because i is not gonna, or one is not equal to two. The second one, it does match, so then it prints out something different. And then finally, if it doesn't match any of those, it will print out something else, but since it did match this, it stopped and printed out something different. And this else clause happened when we hit three. So let's try another list. I'll say list D. And we'll say, Justin, Apple, food, not the computer, <laughs> some number, another, and another number. All right, so we got this new list. Now this one, I wanna figure out which items in this list are actually numbers. And I'm gonna make a new list for it. So I'm gonna just say list um, E is equal to an empty list, right? So if I printed out either one of those, it would show me accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and for I in list D. Remember, I could be anything, it could be any variable. We're gonna loop through here. And now I want a condition that checks what I is. So actually, I'm gonna go ahead and print out I first. And I wanna introduce a very simple thing that is built into Python and it's called is instance. And you can compare something to, to something else. This will make more sense and we'll definitely come back to this, but I'm gonna say the number three and then int. I press enter, it says true. So this is a, this is an, a comparison that's saying is instance. So is this a, a number? So is it an integer? Um, if I did 3.0, it would not be considered an integer. Integers are whole numbers and that's it. But if I also said is instance, let's say Justin, it'll say false. But if I change it to str, it'll say true. 
kind of a cool little thing that we're gonna use in this for loop. So let's go back and we're gonna now do for i and list d. And now what we wanna do is we'll say if is instance, and we'll say three and int, no, excuse me, not three, but i and int, so i being the variable for that particular iteration, so the item that's that in that iteration. So if it's an integer, we're gonna append list e dot append i. Otherwise, we're not gonna do anything. And then finally, we'll print out list e now that it's done. And we have two items in there. So what we did here was actually parse the data of list d for everything that's an integer and put it into list e. List d still has those items. So we could have popped it out, not necessary, but we could have removed it from that list. It's not completely necessary, but it's a good example of how these conditionals can work. So let's go ahead and do that. This time, I'm gonna declare a variable called x, and I'll say z x is equal to zero. So the reason I'm using x equals to zero is so I can find the item in any particular index. So list d of x will give me that first item. List D of X plus one will give me that second item. If you remember back to how we got any particular item in a list, so going off of the index of it. So zero is the first position, also known as the zero index is gonna be Justin. The one index is gonna be Apple and so on. Okay, so now that we've got this, we can loop through it. So let's go ahead and loop through it. I'll say four item in list D this time, just so we're not getting anything confused. We're gonna now print out the list D of X. And then we're gonna finally do X plus equals to one. This is the same thing as saying X equals to X plus one, which essentially is saying the new value of X is equal to the old value of X plus one. It looks a little confusing, but it's basically gonna calculate this first and then set it equal to that new variable. And this is just a shortcut to do all that. So what it's gonna do now is it's gonna loop through and it should print out every single one. Notice it's not printing out the item, it's printing out what the X value is in this list. Press enter and it prints out every single one. This is important for what we're gonna do is remove those integers from list D and only have them in list E. So list E I'm also gonna make empty again. So list E is empty, list D is what we expect. So now that we understand this part, there's a few things that we can do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say for item in list D, and we'll say if item, or excuse me, if is instance item and int, so int is an integer, we're gonna append list E, so we're gonna add it to list E, list E dot append item, and then we want to pop out this item from the list. So we'll do list D dot pop X. And then finally, what we wanna do is X equals to, or X plus equals to one. So the very first iteration is gonna check this and then it's gonna remove it. Uh, and then it's gonna keep going. It's gonna, and then it's gonna pop it from the list. So let's go ahead and try this out. And we got pop index at a range. Hmm, why did that happen? Well, it's probably happening because of the time we're doing this versus this. So let's try it again, but this time we're not gonna put X in. So for item in list D, if instance is item, we're gonna append that item and then we're just gonna go ahead and print out X to see what's going on. So X is nine. There's probably a reason for this because we actually didn't reset X. So let's reset X equal to zero. And let's try our original four um, again. We'll say X equals to zero and we'll also put list D equals to all of this stuff. So we kind of have to reset everything basically. So last list E is equal to an empty list. There, so now everything's reset. All of our variables are reset back to where they were. Because realistically, 
X should never have been nine because there's only, you know, six things here. Okay, so let's do that loop one more time. We're gonna loop through it and I'm just gonna press up. You can do the exact same thing. If instance is item, up again, um, and we're gonna go all the way up to append and then finally all the way up to pop. And then lastly, we are gonna add that X to itself plus one. Okay, so this is that original one we had. If the instance is, uh, or whatever the instance is, it's gonna be that item, if it's an integer, we're gonna take that item and then we're gonna pop it out of the list. I'm gonna try this again. And now it pops out those numbers, right? So that's what this is doing. It's showing those actual numbers. So if we look at list D, we see only strings in there. And then if we look at list E, we see only numbers. Very, very useful for controlling the flow of our data. Now, of course, this might be a little bit complicated for you, and that's okay, because you can rewatch this to fully understand what's going on here. But once we actually put it into practical use, it will make a lot more sense. But basically what I did here was I created a simple for loop that pulled out the data or the integer data from any given list and I put it into a new list. By now you might be wondering is how do we make this more dynamic? That is, how do I not have to type out all this stuff or scroll up or whatever, but I can still run this sort of idea? Like how is it that I can take in a list and then send back two lists? One with just the numbers and one with, you know, names. Now, how likely is it that you're gonna use something like this? Um, I, I can't say for sure, but showing you how it works is rather important just because how these control flow statements or these conditional statements, they actually really affect how we can design our web application. Um, but what I was saying about having this so we don't have to rewrite it, it's called a function. What that allows us to do is we can execute a function so then this calculation can happen very easily. And that's something we'll actually talk about tomorrow. But if you do have any questions on this, let us know in the comments below. The, these lists and conditionals are very important and very useful. Um, lists are representative of big sets of data. So it might not be a list, it might be a dictionary or it might be a tuple. But the point is we would loop through them and then we'd look for some sort of condition while we loop through them and then do something different. Like I said at the very beginning of this. Um, very interesting concept, very useful. Um, it's definitely something you'll need to understand going forward, but we will revisit it quite a few times, even if you don't fully understand it now. We hope by the end of 30 days of Python, you definitely will. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.